All right. G greetings, everybody. My name is Robin Chan. Welcome to PulpCon. I'm kicking us off with a Pulp Year in Review 2023 and a look ahead. Technically, there's a little bit of 2022, the tail end after our last PulpCon, uh, but for brevity, uh, that was not a, not a great uh, title for a talk. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. All right, and I know it said that Brian and Tanya would be on this, but it's just me, although they may chime in uh, if they'd like to add anything. So let's go ahead and get started, all right. First up, this is the agenda for this quick talk. I do not believe it will take 25 minutes, so you may get a little bit of a break in between, and I will kick us off, all right. So first off, apologies, this is definitely a very wordy, wordy slide. Some community and project news. Uh, you may have noticed that the Libera chat portaling is broken on Matrix. There is a link there um, onto this um, slide deck um, about that. We've left it as is and uh, welcome any input from other folks um, of how we'll handle that in the future. But for now, we've just kind of let it broke. And um, we will be looking at things in the future, but for right now, we're just on Matrix. Uh, we have been doing some really great improvements to the release uh, process and tooling, and we are currently weekly releasing Pulp Core. And you may have noticed that the Pulp Core release numbers have been going up a little faster than usual. So if you um, had seen that and wasn't really sure why, that is why. Um, you also uh, may be interested to know that galaxy.ansible.com is now backed by Pulp. Um, so we're very excited to see that happen. Um, and um, after last PulpCon, um, you may have noticed that our Pulp installer, uh, which is the Ansible-based one, um, is you know end of life. Uh, we did go ahead and discontinue that and are moving in favor to container-based container Pulp um, uh, as being kind of the uh, recommended way to install Pulp um, and the way that we're supporting it with our tooling. Um, we have uh, the Ansible-based Pulp operator um, will become the Galaxy operator. Um, you will see this, um, <clears throat> uh, you will see the, you know, um, this, Operator will actually be moving to the Galaxy NG uh, organization or the Ansible organization, um, and you'll find it there. Um, but they, we will not be supporting it anymore, um, and that will be moved over there. Um, starting in Pulp Core 3.25, we've upgraded to Django 4.2 for um, uh, latest and greatest. So hopefully you've noticed that and appreciate that. And also uh, telemetry, we've renamed this analytics. We realized uh, as we're, we're learning as we go along, we realized we weren't using that terminology quite correctly. Um, and so you'll see that uh, you know, th throughout, we're, we're trying to uh, learn from our mistakes and keep going. Um, and then recently, um, our most recent Pulp Core release, 3.40, uh, pulp file is now merged into pulp core. So if you're used to um, pulling in that um, plugin separately, uh, you'll notice that that is now included in pulp core. Um, and I'll pause here. If there's any other community or project news that I have neglected, please feel free to drop that in the chat. Um, those are some of the notable things that I could think of that you may want to know or you may have noticed and were a little bit, um, uh, you know, a little bit maybe confused about, or if you didn't catch some of our postings on Discourse, um, those are some of the biggies right there. All right, excellent. All right, so next up, we're gonna move on to accomplishments. Um, these are the big features that we have delivered um, in the past year, since last year's PulpCon. Um, and um, yep, so first off is domains. We've also delivered uh, flat pack support with a contribution from a community member. We have also revived Maven and Gem plugins, um, been developing them further, making sure they're up to date. They had gotten a little bit, uh, 
you know, uh, straggling for a while, and we've put some investment in there. And we have also, um, oh, and sorry, the stars there, if you, had, if you didn't know, the asterisk means that there is a PulpCon talk um, this week. So definitely um, try to check those out if you're interested in what those are. Uh, the domains talk is later today, um, and the flat pack support, uh, Stefan is, is doing that tomorrow morning, I believe, uh, and the Maven demo is later today. Um, and for the deployment improvements, there will be a talk on this um, at the end of day two and the beginning of day three. Um, there's been a lot of effort put into improving this deployment experience, um, and um, we have completely moved over to the Golang implementation upstream. Uh, the GA of that should be releasing very soon. Um, and even though it's still a beta right now, there are some folks that are using this in their production systems, um, and so we are we are recommending it. Um, and you will see that the um, Ansible-based operator is no longer no longer being supported by the Pulp community. Um, so hopefully, you can check out those talks that are coming up related to the deployments uh, with or without the operator, and also an HA deployment of Kubernetes. So um, check those out. Um, those should be very interesting for most folks. Um, and we've also been investing in our OS3 plugin and support as well. So um, those are some of the big ones we've done. I'm not done quite yet. Another page of these. All right, um, and we have done some really exciting performance improvements and optimizations. Uh, the import-export um, uh, work, we've done some big performance improvements on that very recently. Um, we've um, uh, definitely, you know, fixed a lot of issues uh, related to improvement um, of memory usage and uh, making things faster, um, just, just a general hardening as Pulp 3 has gone out there in the world and being used by larger systems. We found some issues and have been fixing them recently. Um, open telemetry, um, Deco, I believe, has to talk later this week. Um, and there is a presentation on the performance uh, improvements um, if you'd like to join that. Um, and we've also worked on point of presence uh, this past year, uh, which is a way to replicate pulp repositories and distributions. So um, these are some of the larger items that we have done in the past year. And we do have some talks that you can check out to understand a little bit more of them if any of those pique your interest. All right, and this one is just a, uh, oops, it doesn't quite fit, all right. Um, so, uh, uh, and this one, I will actually uh, invite folks from the community if you have any other notable enhancements or smaller changes, maybe not the feature or epic sized things that you can think of in the past year. I wanted to mention a bunch of these. Um, I actually won't read all of them except for the last one, which is Pulp CLI, because it looks like that's a little bit cut off there. Um, if you want to take a look at this, um, there's a bunch of things that we've been doing um, in general. And um, I also would invite, if there's anything else that folks feel of note and you want to drop it in the chat, uh, feel free to throw that into the chat there. I'm not going to read over all of those, but we've done a lot of, a lot of smaller fixes and enhancements and things like that. All right, no other ones? All right, excellent. Um, next up, this is the last slide, really, which is, oops, actually, do we skip one? Oh, no, okay. Um, so, yep, uh, just wanted to let you all know where to find us. Um, if you're here, obviously, you found us somewhere, uh, but wanted to put a reminder out here uh, we have our Pulp website. Um, some of these items are on there. You can find out some more details. These are all hyperlinked in, our, in the presentation. Uh, we've got our discourse um, instance. And I would say if you have any larger items that you'd like to discuss or give us a feedback, go ahead and put those there in the discourse as a post. That'll be really great for us to understand 
uh, what pain points you're having. Uh, we'll definitely have some time to discuss that later this week, but uh, this is a great place to kind of put it up, up there. Maybe folks um, aren't able to attend here or just want to drop that in there and let folks mull over a little bit more. Um, you'll find us on Matrix as well. And we also invite you to create issues on GitHub if you're finding them. Um, go ahead and report them there. Um, if you want to contribute fixes, we're, we're very welcoming of that. Um, even if you're not quite sure um, and uh, need a little bit of help there, we're always happy to um, uh, guide folks through the contribution process, uh, give feedback on fixes, um, uh, understand the issue a little bit better. So please, you know, if you are interested, if you have seen issues, we do invite you to to, to come into the community, uh, contribute there, uh, give us your thoughts and your feedback. Um, and um, that is really the end of my talk. It is very quick because there's there's only so much you can do to make this exciting, uh, other than listing a bunch of features. Um, so that is the end of my talk. Um, I would invite, do we have any questions here? Grant, go for it. If I can push the mute button, there we go. Um, your talk title uh, talks about a look ahead. Do you have any thoughts about where, what that you want, that we can share with the community about what Pulp is gonna be looking at in 2024? Gotcha, yes, that's a great question. Um, I would say, um, I was hesitant to put too much on here in terms of our roadmap because honestly, it's been um, a, ch a year of a lot of change. Um, it has been uh, quite eventful in that in that realm. Um, so I would say, uh, you know, one thing I, I expect is still more hardening, more folks using pulp, us finding a lot of those issues related to very large production systems. Um, I expect that we will be pretty responsive to getting feedback from our stakeholders, both at Red Hat and within the community, um, within, within other folks that we're talking to about issues. Um, so I expect there to be more hardening and, you know, really just responsiveness to what we're hearing from the community about where the industry is going, where the community is going. Um, I think, you know, I can't make a lot of predictions. Um, some of the OS tree and uh, Maven and Gem plugin work was not predicted ahead of time. That was things that we were hearing and seeing out there in the upstream communities. So I expect us to be pretty responsive to that. So um, that is why I put this slide here to ask folks to give us some feedback and to give us um, some input on what you all are seeing out there in the wild in terms of what content is being used, what's gaining traction. Um, that is some of what I expect to see. Um, does anyone, uh, maybe Tanya or Brian or um, some of the other folks want to chime in on some of the things that they see coming up that they'd like to mention? Go for it, Brian. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I want to call two things. Um, one is uh, kind of an increased um, investment and simple. Uh, usability around the containers uh, and also around the operator. So those are our two supported primary ways to install Pulp. And so I think we're going to, over the next 12 months, see those um, become even better and um, have new users or upgrading users use Pulp even better. Um, so that's kind of like not Pulp itself in the sense that it's not part of Pulp's feature set or a specific plugin, but it's stuff around um, around Pulp. Um, which containers, uh, particularly the single, the Pulp single container, which is um, our primary um, installation method, you can find that at Pulp um, OCI uh, containers, which I will put a link um, to here. Um, the other, I mentioned two things, it's one of them. Um, the other, yeah, the OCI containers. Um, the other thing I would say is, um, I think you're going to see, I think we're going to see an increased focus on operationalizing pulp. So, um, think, uh, you know, what I would really, um, some of the work that I'm planning to be involved in at least is, uh, helping to create some community driven, um, standard operating procedures around operating pulp instances and more guides 
for admins who are administrating pulp systems. And um, that can come in the form of specific guides or it can come in the form of better docs. Um, so that's kind of, once again, it's not, it's not core pulp features itself, but kind of um, leveraging all the features that we do have and making them even more usable by folks. If you remember last year, we um, created this um, idea of a community of practice for administrators. And there's a discourse thread that kind of has had some activity on it. Um, hasn't been as successful, um, I would say, as I hoped, but um, I think we're going to keep investing in that idea. So basically operationalizing pulp, I think will be a big focus over the next 12 months. So since I'm the one that asked the question, I should probably contribute to answering it. Um, one theme that I think folk are going to hear repeatedly in the in the course of this week is we did a thing because we heard that there was a demand for it, that community asked for it. Our stakeholders said, we really want to see this thing. Um, all of us here are aware of the reality of people and time. There's only so many people. And there's only so much time to do things. And there's always an infinite number of stuff to do. So the, we place a really high value on uh, getting practical requests from folk who are using Pulp saying, you know, if you could do this one small trick, it would make my life so much easier. Uh, getting that kind of feedback is really important um, and, and helps us prioritize what we're going to do. Um, if you do make a request of us and we're like, that's a great idea, but we just can't do it this year. It's not that your ideas are bad or wrong. It's just there's only so many hands and so much brain space to go around. Um, if you have an idea that you think is, is so important that we're not getting to that you want to like throw together a proof of concept and submit a PR, that would be amazing. And as Robin mentioned, there's been a couple of community members that have done just that and it's been folded into the into the project. So I want to thank everybody who's done that. Um, that's, so that was it for me is if the community can help us prioritize what's really important versus what would be nice to have that you'll that will help us get some brain space for you to do the things that really will make people's lives easier. That's it. All right. Anything else folks would like to chime in about? All right, um, so great. I have added that onto the slides and I will get these posted on the schedule. So you'll see that there. Uh, Tanya's calling out that there are a lot of improvements and harder hardening to pull plugins, some of which will be highlighted in lightning talks later today. Um, I am going to stop the recording and stop sharing now and hand it back over to grant for a little bit of housekeeping maybe uh let me go ahead and stop the recording